Ivy Tech Community College has made a commitment to dramatically increase the number of eight-week courses we offer. As faculty, this presents us with an interesting challenge. For most courses, it's not necessarily effective to simply double up the content, but at the same time, it's not practical for us to completely redesign all of our courses in such a short time frame. So what is the best way to approach this transition? While there's no right or wrong answer to this question, in this session we'll discuss some things to keep in mind while repurposing your course for the new eight-week model. We recommend beginning with a few fundamental questions about your course. What do I want my students to learn? Where and how will they be learning? What factors must we be aware of? And what materials or content is already available for my course? First question, what do I want my students to learn? The most important thing we can do getting started on our course transition is to revisit the official Course Outline of Record, or COR. This includes the major course learning objectives and course topics. As we review our existing content, keep the COR handy and make sure that it serves as the decision maker for whether content you're covering falls under the category of need to know or simply nice to know. The next question we need to ask ourselves is where and how will my students be learning? There are three things we encourage faculty to consider in terms of classroom functionality. First is your classroom space, second equipment and tools, and finally consider the best approaches for teaching the content. Start by considering your classroom space. What type of layout does your room or lab have? Are there individual desks or long tables? Are the tables movable? How much room do you have to reconfigure the class for experiments, group work, demonstrations, etc.? Changing up our classroom space can break down the classroom norms and encourage creative thinking. Even something as simple as changing the location of tables and chairs in a room can completely change the way we converse and can also enable us to integrate technology in ways we may not have previously tried. We should also ask what equipment and tools are available. Many of us have a tendency to either shy away from or gravitate toward new technologies. This can be good or bad. We encourage faculty to try new technologies and seek help from your students to master these programs and applications. But don't use a new technology simply because it's new. Find the right tool for the right job. Additionally, consider the equipment checkout pool at the IDC where faculty can check out equipment for classroom use. The next question is, what are the best approaches for teaching the content? We always want to make sure that we're including learning activities that appeal to the different learning styles. There are a number of different recognized learning styles, the primary styles being visual, auditory, reading and writing, and kinesthetic. In that same vein, we want to also make sure that we're varying the types of assessments we're using so that a student who struggles with one particular type of assessment is not at a consistent disadvantage when it comes time to demonstrate their learning. Some types of assessments that can be used include quizzes, discussions, projects, group work, written, presentations, etc. There are many theories on learning and demonstrating learning that you may want to consider when revisiting your course. Among the types of learning are student-based learning, problem-based learning, active learning, and constructivism. These learning types share some common basic principles. Instead of the teacher holding all of the knowledge and transferring that knowledge directly to the students, instructors will act more as guides through the learning process. Instead of telling students something, they may ask the students a question. The students can then shape their own learning by pursuing knowledge in their own special areas of interest. Instructors continue to provide guidance, feedback, and their own expert opinions and observations while ensuring that the students meet the course learning objectives. As you work through your course, there are a few general factors to remain aware of. First and foremost, we must remember that feedback and communications must be timely. This will affect the types and quantity of assessments that can effectively be included in a shorter course term. Also keep in mind different types of interaction, student to student, student to instructor, and instructor to student. The feedback loop is critical to student success in any course, regardless of the term length. 
One way we can help reduce the length of the feedback loop is to begin by setting very clear expectations for all course assessments. Setting expectations starts at the very beginning with our objectives. While instructors are not permitted to change course objectives, you may have some flexibility in creating or modifying your sub-objectives. While working with objectives or sub-objectives, think in terms of Bloom's taxonomy. Where do you want your students to be working at any given point in your course? Do you teach an introductory course, where students will be primarily responsible for remembering or demonstrating an understanding of a topic? Or do you teach a higher level course where students will be creating and evaluating? This is what truly begins our feedback loop as we determine what our base expectations will be. As we continue to develop our courses and create or fine tune our assessments, we must also keep in mind the acronym SMART, which stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Timely. A well-constructed assignment will have specific instructions so the students know exactly what they are expected to do. The assignment will also be measurable. Students should be provided with some way of measuring whether they've achieved the assignment objective. Attainability is also critical. Is the assessment something students can reasonably accomplish in the time frame they've been given? Relevance seems to be common sense, but it's important to evaluate any new content to make sure that the assessment is designed to measure things the students have learned and that assignments don't inadvertently include concepts or objectives that are outside the scope of the course. Timeliness is critical as well. Students need to know not only how they should do something, but also when. Always make sure that due dates are clearly communicated as part of the assignment instructions. Frequent reminders and breaking assignments into multiple milestones are two things that can help keep students on track for larger assignments that may span multiple weeks or class meetings. We've talked a lot about creating content, but you may not necessarily need to create new content. Look through the materials you already have. It's likely that much of it will be reusable in the eight-week format. You might also ask your colleagues if they have offered the course in the eight-week format. If so, how did they do it? Were they successful? If it worked well or didn't work well, consider what about the content contributed to success or failure, and consider what might be done to make the course more successful. Remember, we're part of a greater network. So don't limit your quest for existing content to your own campus. Reach out to your peers statewide. They may have ideas or techniques that would be beneficial for your class. So you're ready to start transitioning? Here are some steps you can take to begin the transition. First, list all of the assessments from your 16-week course and look through the assessments to find similarities and overlap. Are there any assignments that can be combined or scaffolded? Next, begin assigning each assessment to one or more of the course objectives from the COR. Sort through and determine if all of the objectives are being covered and if some are being covered more than is necessary. Last, we want to make sure that we evaluate whether each assignment is covering something that is necessary for meeting the course objectives or if the assignment is supplemental. There is no right or wrong way to transition a course from 16 weeks to 8. Each instructor will likely have different preferences for approaching their transition. It's also important for us to remember that our transition course won't be perfect right out of the gate. No matter how much work we put into preparing, there will always be changes and improvements that we'll want to make along the way, so don't let that discourage you. Because each instructor has individual teaching styles and each class has individual students, no one course design will work perfectly for all instructors or all classes. This transition gives us a great opportunity to revisit our courses and explore new ideas and possibilities.